This video is going to look at how to determine the latency and area of a piece of digital logic. We're going to focus on determining the latency and area of a type of carry lookahead adder. For this carry lookahead adder, we're going to have 30 bits in the adder, and each of the blocks is going to have 3 bits in it. And so, abstractly, this diagram here shows the carry lookahead adder. So, we've got a number of 3 bits carry lookahead blocks. We're showing the three bits coming from the inputs A and B, the sum bits coming out, as well as the carry in going into the adder as a whole. And so to analyze both the latency and the area, it will help to be able to see the internals of a, particular, or a single carry look ahead block. And so after expanding one of those blocks, we have a figure like we've shown here. So I've expanded one of them to show the internal adders as well as the carry logic. And so there's basically three things in the end that we're going to look at. One is to determine the critical path through this circuit or the maximum latency. Another is to look at the shortest path, which is sometimes important when considering the whole time. And finally, we're going to look at the area of this block. And so we're going to start first with the propagation delay. And so here we're looking for the longest path. And so we're interested in where the inputs come in and then where the final outputs comes out, and so the final output is the final carry out and the sum bits, and the inputs are all of the A and B and also carry in inputs. And so we're trying to determine the propagation delay for this carry look ahead adder. The first element of this, the inputs A and B, will come in, and the circuit has to determine the propagate and generate bits for this block. And the propagate and generate bits are determined by this set of AND and OR gates in each of the carry lookahead blocks. And so this would give us a first term where we have either an AND gate or an OR gate. So the exact gate we include depends on the delay of the particular gate. So here I'm going to write this as we're going to have the max of either the delay of an AND gate or the delay of an OR gate. So that's the first element, and then these generate and propagate signals have to go into the logic that determines the propagate and generate signals for the larger bit of blocks. So the next step is to determine the latency of this propagate and generate block here. And so in this case, the worst case path is through this set of blocks here, and so we have the latency of two AND gates and two OR gates. At this point, all of the blocks have been doing this in parallel, so all of the n over k blocks that we have in this carry lookahead adder have done both the individual bit generate and propagate generation as well as the multi-bit generate and propagate signals. And now these generate signals and propagate signals start to feed into the block of logic here that determines the carry out of an individual carry lookahead block. And one of the inputs to this block is the actual carry in to this AND and OR gate. And so a individual carry lookahead block can't truly compute its carry out until it receives the carry out of the previous block or receives its carry in. And so in this system, we have 30 bits overall and each block is 3 bits. So we would have 30 over 3 individual carry lookahead blocks. And we're interested until when the carry signal gets into the last carry look ahead block. So we're going to subtract one off here, and then we need to account for the delay of this area in blue. And so we have both the delay of an AND gate and the delay of an OR gate. And then the final element that we have is the amount of time it takes to go through the final carry look ahead block. And basically there are two possible critical paths here. So we're interested in one of two paths. One is the path through, in this case, the three full adders we have. So it could be the delay of the full adders, or it could be the delay through the carry out signal again, like before. So it could be the delay of an AN plus an OR gate. And so if we look at this full adder here, the circuit on the right is showing an individual full adder. So we've already been able to compute the A XORed with B ahead of time since we've had A and B from the start. So now we're just waiting until the carry in comes in. And so in this case, we basically would have three times the delay of an AND plus an OR gate. And since three times AND plus OR is more than just an AND and OR, 
we know that the max is this three times the delay of the full adder here. So that takes care of the propagation delay for the carry look ahead adder that we're looking at here. Another element of interest in some cases is the contamination delay or the shortest path. So something else that we're interested in is the contamination delay for this carry look ahead adder. And so here we're looking for the shortest path. And if we look at an individual full adder, we could see that an output could change as quickly as when A and B change and go through an AND gate and an OR gate. But the shortest path would be through a single AND gate and a single OR gate. And so that would be the contamination delay or the shortest path delay. So that takes care of the two latencies we might be interested in. And finally, we're interested potentially in the amount of area that this carry look ahead adder consumes. In this carry look ahead adder, there are a total of n over k blocks. So we have a total of n over k blocks. And within each of these blocks, we have in this case k or three full adders. So we are going to have three times the area of a single full adder. And then we have the area for the carry logic. And so if we continue with this to expand this to make it more concrete, we have a total of 30 bits and we have three bits in each block within a full adder, or so we've got three full adders within this particular example. Within a full adder, if we look at the figure, we see that we have two XOR gates, we have two AND gates, and we have a single OR gate. So that takes care of the first term in our area equation. And then we have to account for the area of the logic to compute the carry signal. And so in this path, we only have AND and OR gates. So we're going to set aside a region for AND and a region for OR gates. And then we want to look at the different pieces that we have. So for the region in red here, we have both three AND gates and three OR gates. In the region in green, we have both two AND gates and two OR gates. In the region in blue, which computes the propagate logic, we have only a single AND, and gate. And then finally, in the region in purple, we have both an AND gate and an OR gate. And so this would complete the general equation for the area. You could obviously simplify this down into fewer terms, but this gives you the idea of how we would develop this equation.